My name is Peter Bolster, and I'm uh, the past president of the Rotary Club uh, that in Alton that's uh, sponsoring uh, the event this evening. Uh, I'm doing this this year as the past president because our president, Rick Fogg, is not able to be here because of a death in the family. And so just keep uh, their family very much in your prayers. The Rotary Club, uh, who is sponsoring this for the third year, we're kind of new at this compared to the people over here. Uh, Bob and Mary B. Longabaugh, who have been producing this for now 15 years, and our moderator, Mark Northridge, who's been moderating it now for 15 years. So I think we want to give them a big hand for their, their work. We have a new person that's the timer this year, uh, Corey Brown, uh, a new member of our Rotary Club, and she lives right across the street. And she has a real tough job at uh, making that light uh, come on when it's supposed to come on, and smiling all the time that she puts it on. <laughs> uh, over the years, for many, many years, Shirley uh, uh, Bishop was the timer. Uh, and she's not able to be with us. I think she's enjoying some nice warm weather down in Florida right now. Uh, and so we want to just uh, thank Shirley for uh, all the work that she's done. She's now moved to Wolfboro. And, uh, uh, but I think she's been in Florida uh, for, for a while here, and so we want to thank her for all the work that she's done. The Alton Rotary Club has been in existence about uh, eight years now. Uh, we uh, have about 25 members, and we meet uh, at 7 o'clock every Thursday morning at the American Legion building uh, for breakfast, and uh, usually some very, very good speakers uh, having to do with uh, uh, local uh, people in town government, in the schools, in uh, people that are business people, and some very interesting speakers, but also some very interesting fellowship. Our club is both a local uh, charitable club. Uh, we do an awful lot of work locally. Just the most recent thing that we did was uh, sponsor the fishing derby for the kids uh, down at the fishing derby, uh, at the winter carnival, uh, just uh, this last uh, Sunday. Uh, the Rotary Club has been very much involved in the last uh, four or five months as volunteers and contributors uh, to the uh, Senior Citizen Expansion Program. The biggest pro project that Rotary has had over the years uh, internationally has been the Polio Plus Program. Uh, partnering with other groups around the world and the Gates Foundation, uh, Rotary has raised almost uh, $300 million from their own members uh, to partner with other monies from other groups to eradicate polio around the world, and we're just about that close. And uh, that will be a wonderful thing. Some of us can remember when uh, things like uh, you know, smallpox and that sort of thing, we didn't have to have vaccinations anymore that we had when we were younger, and it's almost the point where uh, polio is going to be eradicated in that same way. The, additionally, uh, Rotary sponsors uh, exchange programs, bringing students from other countries here as high school students and sending uh, students overseas uh, to enhance the, one of the goals of Rotary, which is world peace uh, through friendship and understanding. This year, we have been privileged in Alton to host a exchange student from Belgium. Uh, Quentin has been with us uh, for since September. Uh, my mm -hmm. wife and I had the privilege of having him with us for the first three months, and now he's with another of the Rotary Club members for the next three months, and will be with another family for the next three months. And he has made a real tremendous contribution uh, to uh, to the high school, and as long as as well as two other exchange students from uh, uh, from Senegal and from Spain uh, through other programs that are at the high school. So we want to welcome you this year, this year to our candidates night. And I think we have our biggest crowd here that we've had in a long time. Uh, and we just uh, hope that uh, you have some good questions and you hear the answers you need to hear so that you can make up your, your mind in terms of who you're going to vote for uh, in the election. So at this point, I'd just like to turn this over to our, our moderator, Mark Northridge, who's going to take you the rest of the way. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Tonight's meeting is to give candidates running for town and school positions a forum to express their views and answer questions from the audience. The rules of the evening are, <coughs> candidates running unopposed will be introduced and invited to make up to a one-minute statement. 
Then candidates running for contested offices will be invited to the head table and allowed to make up a two-minute presentation, participate in question and answer session with the audience, and then make up to a one-minute summary. When one particular candidate is asked a question from the audience, I will give the other candidates an opportunity to also respond to that question. As in the past, if any individual is present, present and running a writing campaign, he will be given the same opportunity as those on the ballot. If a candidate is not present this evening, I will allow his designated representative to participate. Please be aware that tonight's meeting is being taped for a replay on Channel 26 at various times prior to the March 13th elections. It is therefore necessary that all speakers use the microphones. Please begin all questions or comments by first stating your name. Finally, remember that we're all friends and neighbors and please act accordingly. Tonight we will start with the school ballot. Running for school district clerk is Linda Roy. She's running unopposed. unopposed. Is Linda here? Running for school district moderator is Mark A. Northridge, running unopposed. That's me, folks. <laughs> you'll hear enough from me tonight, so I won't say any more. Uh, the school board position uh, is contested, so we'll come back to that. On the town ballot, selectmen uh, for three years, uh, one position is uh, Steve McMahon and Mark DeCoff. Uh, we'll come back to them on, uh, with the uh, contested races. Running for selectmen for a two-year term is Sidney Johnson. Sidney, would you like to make a uh, statement? And I'd ask you to come up and use the microphone. Johnson and I'm running for the two-year position. Can you hear her, folks? No. I'm not sure that's going, is it? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm a lot shorter than you, Sydney, so I turned it down. Great. It is great to see this larger crowd here, so I'm happy to see people turning out. Still not hearing? Still can't hear. It's on. Is it on? It's on. Get up real close to it. Yeah. Okay. Is this better? Yeah. How about a yell? Yeah. Will that work? <laughs> okay. Uh, just to give you some of my past experience, I have served uh, for two years on the budget committee here in town where one year I was chair. I've served three years on the Prospect Mountain High School Board, where I was elected chair for two of those years, and also three years on the Alton Central Middle School School Board, where I was chair for two out of three years there. Um, I'm the past president of the Alton Youth League here in town, which is a nonprofit organization that supports approximately 180 children ages 4 to 12. Um, currently, I am on the board of directors for Lakes Region um, excuse me, for the Genesis Behavioral Health in Lake, of the Lakes Region. And um, I've been the interim select person since November of 2011. In addition to that, I'm also a sitting member of the Alton Parks and Recreation Department. So I look forward to uh, continuing to be involved in town and to serving uh, over the next two years. Thank you very much. Thank you. Was that mic working okay? Could you hear us? The speaker, the mic seems some, to be making some, Something's noise, not working there, Peter. But uh, it's plenty of mic, but it's not coming to the speaker. oh, speakers very well. The speaker's off. Yeah. <laughs> Peter, if you're over the console, if you can figure out which mic it is, <laughs> just start with mic one and oh, boost it. Oh, I think, uh, okay. Except you need to know. <laughs> Okay. Not a sound. Okay, we're going to How's that? Hello? Is that better? Yeah, I think the sound. I think the sound is probably. Yeah. And if you do come up, just stand real close to the mic. 
Running uncontested for town clerk, Lisa Noyes. Lisa, did you care to come up? Hi, I'm Lisa Noyes, and um, I've been town clerk since March of 2000. And um, I've enjoyed it a lot. Thank you very much for letting me uh, do my job, and I'm looking forward to another three years. Thank you. Thank you. Running for tax collector uncontested, Ann Kruger. Is Ann here? appreciate being your tax collector um, and it's been a privilege I'm going into my 25th year this year and I um, am looking forward to running for another three years Thank you, Amy. running uncontested for treasurer Gene Stone My name is Jean Stone. I'm on the ballot for town treasurer. I am currently the deputy treasurer, and I've had the privilege to work with Pat for the past 12 years. I am completely familiar with the policies and procedures of the position, and I want to assure you that I will maintain the accuracy and the integrity of, of what Pat has given us these past years. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Pat for her many years of service and dedication that she has given to our town. And we'd like to say happy motoring on your retirement, Pat. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Jean. Trustee of the Trust Funds, uncontested, Robert Morris. Robert here. Library trustee, uncontested, Linda Hess. Is Linda here? We have two library trustee uh, seats that are contested. We'll come back to them later. Moderator, uncontested, Mark Northridge. I won't say any more about that. <laughs> Cemetery trustee. I have a letter here I'd like to read. Uh, it is a Contested race, I have a letter from one of the candidates here, uh, Stuart Keith. Uh, please be advised that I find myself unable to assume the responsibilities of the office of cemetery trustee. The circumstances of my withdrawal are completely unforeseen. Therefore, I respectfully request that you vigorously support my opponent. Uh, her opponent is Sean Mann. I'll ask Sean to make a one-minute presentation. running for cemetery trustee of the town of Alton. I have been a resident here for 10 years. I have been a deacon of the Community Church of Alton for the past year. I continue to serve on the diaconate board. Um, I feel that I wish to do more for the community. I love this town very much, and I both have the time and a dedication to be a cemetery trustee. Thank you. Thank you. Water Commissioner. Uncontested, John Conboy. John here? Water Commissioner, uncontested for two years, Paul White. Paul here. Water Commissioner for one year, uncontested, Richard Glidden. Rich here. Yeah. I'm Richard Glidden, resident of Alton. I guess lifelong. I got about 25 years between drilling wells, working on municipal water systems and stuff like that, so I figured I could be an asset to the water department. I appreciate you both. 
Thank you. Budget Committee for one year, uncontested. Andy McLeod. Is Andy here? Hi, my name is Andy McLeod. I've been uh, in the town of Alton since the summer of 2001. My wife and I moved here, and since then we've had two boys who are in our schools. Uh, I've been uh, attending several of the Budget Committee meetings over the last several months. Uh, I think I've been to four of them now. And I, I see a, a, lot of, uh, uh, a lot of anger, hate, and discontent. I see a lot of treatment of uh, fine people in this town not going so well. And I'm concerned about that. And I want to get on that board, and I want to work with everybody on that board, everybody on the school board, and all the selectmen, to bring a little civility back into this process, and get some real budgets out there that we can all stomach. Um, on, the, on the note on the school, this is a tough, tough time to make things work. But I think uh, if we're all pulling it together, we can make a new school, and we can improve the one that we're in. Work it, get it working for the kids. Thank you. Thank you. Planning board for three years. Two candidates vote for more, not more than two, so uh, uh, both candidates would be uncontested. Is David Collier here? Scott Williams here. Planning board for two years uncontested. Roger Sample. Is Roger here? <coughs> Supervisor of the checklist for six years uncontested. Anna Griffin. Is Anna here? I'll speak to Anna. Hi, I'm Mary B. Longabaugh. Anna is uh, Griffin is running for the. A six year supervisor of the checklist. It's her turn this year. And I'm just asking that you vote for her. She is the one who knows the computer and gets the program out. Without her, I would just be at a loss what to do. So please vote for Anna. Uh, she's not here because she just recently lost a brother. So thank you very much. Thank you. Zoning board for three years, one candidate uncontested, Stephen Miller. Steve? Hi. Uh, I've learned a lot um, at, at the zoning board uh, over the last couple of years, and that's about what it takes to try to, before you kind of figure out what's really going on, you know, and we have a um, uh, how to make the right decisions in town. And uh, I think I've done a fair job. And if you think so too, I'd appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you. Now we'll get to the contested races. Uh, we'll do the school uh, board first. Uh, Terry Noyes, Steve Miller, and Keith Doobie. Would you all come up and take a seat up, up to the front? Bob, Bob, can I do a sound check first? Good evening. Good evening. Uh, we'll go in the order that you're on the ballot. Uh, first, I'll go to Terry and uh, give her the opportunity to make up to a two-minute presentation. Terry. Mr. and Mrs. Longbaugh for their, all of their time that they put into this. 
um, Mark, also. Uh, for those of you that do not know me, my name is Terry Noyes. Um, I am running for re-election to the Alton School Board. I was raised in Alton and graduated from Alton High School. I married my husband Gary, better known as Bubba Noyes, uh, 37 years ago this August. We have three children we raised in Alton. They graduated from Alton High School. I am Nana to four granddaughters, one presently attending Alton Central School, and one will be entering kindergarten next year. I am very civic-minded and an active member of the community. My hobbies include reading, antiquing, spending time with our granddaughters, following my husband and son's athletic teams, and cooking. I have served several years on the Alton and Prospect Mountain School Boards. I have also served for six years <coughs> as the school district moderator. I have experience serving on numerous school-related committees, including policy, finance, budget, principal and superintendent searches, and many, many more. There are three major challenges I presently see facing the school uh, district. The renovation and expansion of this aging Alston Central School building, the ongoing curriculum development to meet the changing state standards, and positive success in community relations. If I am reelected, I will address these challenges by continuing to work towards the goal of getting voter approval for a bond for the renovation and expansion, provide the administration with a budget, including technology and curriculum programs that they need, and to support the teachers and staff, work collaboratively with the programs, soliciting input and active involvement, and seeking ways to enhance our students' education environment. I am running for this office because I have a passion for education and ensuring that all children are provided with an adequate, adequate education. I want to give back to my community, my community that I love dearly. Over the past few years, I've been involved in making some very important educational improvements, and I want to assure that those improvements continue. I am very willing to give up my time and resources to be an advocate for the children and citizens of Alton. I would appreciate your vote on March 13th. Thank you, Terry. Uh, Stephen Miller. Thanks, Mark. I would like to thank the Alton Centennial Rotary Club, the Longa Boss, and Mark Northridge for their civic efforts in bringing to you this candidate forum. I would also like to thank the many Alton taxpayers and town officials for their support and encouragement for my candidacy for the school board. I'm running for one primary reason, to help take Alton Central School and Prospect Mountain High School to the next level. Unfortunately, the next level in this case is, in many cases, just average. The Alton School District, under its current uh, leadership, is ranked 118th out of 142 school districts, or in the bottom 17th of the state. You may not want to hear that, but it's hard to ignore. I am running to help elevate Alton Central School to excellence, not mediocrity. We can do this by pr prioritizing education over, over building an expensive, renovated facility. Our economic and fiscal resources should be spent on state-of-the-art curriculum programs, recruiting the best teachers and staff, keeping those people, the holding, and holding the administration, teachers, and school board accountable for not just meeting standards, but exceeding state proficiency levels. I'm running to stop the, school, uh, the school's business consistently being done behind closed doors. If elected, I will fight for a narrow interpretation of the public right to know law and fight for public business being done in a public forum. I'm running to postpone Alton going into debt for the tune of $22 million. With the additional contributions into the expendable trust, we will have enough money, over a million dollars, to fix the roof, fix the, fix the windows, fix the bathrooms. That is what the school board said we were, we were doing it for, and now we should do as it originally requested. These expendable trusts were never sold to the townspeople as a down payment on a $22 million bond issue, and therefore should be used for the purposes they were intended. I'm ready to enhance the low level of safety protocols in the school. We need more than just cameras that are still not monitored the majority of the time. We have to address the back area, students moving in and out of the building without supervision, and a new safety lock system. I am running to tighten privacy controls for both students and parents. At this time, the level is too low, 
I would have this state audited. I'm running to keep the best superintendents, staff, and teachers available. The best want to be around the best. The best raises the bar for all. If, if the best are not walking through the door, then, it, then we have to go out and we have to recruit them ourselves. I'm running to help improve the business management of the high school. The Alton Central School is doing fine and is well managed. At the high school, the audit is wanted, and the treasurer has resigned at least once rather than be associated with poor business practices. I'm running to guarantee full-time kindergarten and part-time pre-K for all Alton residents. I am running to make sure no teacher is wanting for books, supplies, or any resources they need to complete their mission of teaching excellence. I am willing to write grants, lobby the state, lobby the Department of Education, involve local businesses, or do whatever it takes to raise the bar from mediocrity to excellence. I am asking all of you to give me a chance to deliver on my promise. Thank you very much. Thank you. Running your writing campaign, Keith Doobie. Keith. Thanks, Mark. My name is Keith Doobie. I'm here to ask for your write-in vote for Alton School Board. I grew up here in the summers. I moved here permanently when I was 18. While working, I attended Laconia Technical College for Business Management. As a result, I started a small landscape company here in Alton 14 years ago. And I've continued to take courses on design, installation, and irrigation. Year after year, my business has continued to grow and at its peak employing 11. I have employed people in this town for excess of five years at a time, and I've continued to have employees to this day year-round. I have managed job sites over $250,000, and in the worst economy, I've continued to keep my business afloat. I've sat on the ZBA. I've uh, also done the construction committee for ACS. I am an avid activist with children's sports and athletics and local Cub Scouts. In 2000, I married my wife, who works as an RN in Laconia, and a year and a half later, we became parents. Two years after that, we had our second son. Shortly after my second son was born, I sold half my business because I felt it was consuming too much of my time and I wouldn't have time to spend with my children. As a father of two at ACS, I am always concerned about their education their academics from science, math, music, and their athletics. I push my own children to excel in whatever they do or try. As I found out with my own boys, not every child is the same. I hope to sit on the school board to make sure that children have a choice and a voice in this town and have the opportunities as I did growing up. We all want better for our children, and that is how we grow as a society. We must strive to push our children to do their very best and teach them if they want they must earn it, and as parents, we must give them that opportunity. I find it unfair to the children that ACS provides an unfit environment to which they want, we want them to excel. The children should not have to worry about room temperatures, <coughs> noxious gases, unsafe roofs, and unsecured doors. I believe an unfit environment can keep a child from excelling to his or her potential, or an underappreciated teacher from doing their best. If our children don't perform at their best, it falls directly on us. That's why I ask for your children's safety and education and why the children and I need your vote. Thank you. Thank you. We will now open it up to questions from the audience for the candidates. Uh, if you have a question, please come up to the microphone. Adjusted up and down, <clears throat> depending on your height. <clears throat> Questions from the audience. Start by stating your name, please. Okay. I'm Rebecca McCallick. I'm the treasurer for the Support Alton Schools Parent Organization. And for Mr. Miller, my question is: How do you plan to offer full-day kindergarten and preschool at part-time preschool, with given our current building conditions? We're already maxed fit in here to our maximum and how do you plan on offering this extra space? I don't know this yet. I haven't take I haven't gone over a line by line tour of the architectural plans. So it's difficult for me to address that. 
I know that it's a goal, it's a very important goal, and if, and if there is any way at all possible to do it, I'll find that way. Thank you. And I'll allow the other candidates to uh, address that same question. I'll go to Keith next. Keith, do you have anything you would like to say on that? Um, I do not. Okay. Terry? Obviously, we have, we have issues within the building. Um, we have modules out there. We have, we're short eight classrooms, so <laughs> um, I think it's, we need to bring eight, eight classrooms in the building before we add any other programs. I think if I was a parent and had a student in a, in a module, I think I'd be pretty upset if there were other classrooms starting somewhere in the building. Thank you. Questions, comments from the audience? Lauren Kyle. I noticed on the website, the school website, there's a parent-teacher uh, survey that was done by an academic development institute on May. In that, there's the test scores. I can read those. Reading, third grade is 73%, fourth grade is 60%, fifth grade is 66%, sixth grade is 79%, seventh grade is 69%, eighth grade is 68%. In mathematics, it's 57% for third grade, fourth grade 53%, 52 for fifth grade, 63 for sixth, seven 69th, and eight 62. In math, fourth grade tested 51%, and eighth grade it tested 20%. On the next page of this, it goes about what we should have for different uh, policies. Beside school improvement plan, it says no. Beside curriculum guide, it says no. Homework policy, no. Parent guide to teacher policies. Could you please address how you would improve these if you find these acceptable? Now, is this for any particular person oh. for the group? We'll start with you, Keith. I don't find anything acceptable if the child's not excelling to their potential. Me and my children, we work on everything from science, we go on power school. Uh, my wife spends a lot of time with our children. Um, if they get something wrong, we make sure they correct it, whether they get an improvement in grades or not. Um, my biggest thing is I think the school needs to push parents to work with their children a lot. Um, I have never had an issue with teachers after school. We've been able to meet with them whenever we've needed. Uh, I, think, I think a lot of education relies on parents and the school coming together. Thank you. Terry? I'm not sure what test scores you're talking about. You talked about a parent survey. <coughs> Those are two years now. Those are two-year-old. So, uh, test scores? It was, te it was a report completed, I uh, guess, by the school board and uh, hired this Academic Development Institute. The report was on 5-24-2011. It's on your website. But those are old test scores. They're not this year's. Well, I'm sure they're last year's because it was done in February of 2011. But they're not this year's scores. They're old scores. But they, they have been brought up. We've done a lot on uh, increasing test scores. Steve, um, not, en not enough has been not enough has been done. Um, it, it, it was very satisfying to see the improvement in the test scores, and um, this is like it's uh, doing a lot in that direction and accomplishing a lot. The improvement you have to understand is off a very low bar. It was it was off a bar that was in the bottom 16 percent of the entire school districts in the state that had an elementary school. That being said, this is how you go, this is how I believe you go forward. First of all, you analyze which teachers are getting the highest proficiency ratings per subject and per grade. And you, and, and you have the administration, you have Ms. Leggett, you have Mr. Ross, you have the new superintendent, walk in there and watch them and see how they do it. And then you, <coughs> Replicate it. You also, you hire those teachers as NECAP or AYP mentors. 
If we don't make AYP this year, we're going to be going to a school of, in need of improvement. So let's use the best teachers who seem to have a handle and know what they're doing and make, they, make them the mentors for the rest of the grade. I think we should recruit good teachers out of district <coughs> and pay a premium to have them come to Alton Central School. When I say pay a premium, maybe an extra step or, what, or whatever it takes to get a great teacher. Okay, the school is only as good as the teachers. I, I suggest we move poor, they're not, you're not going to like this, but this is what I would do. You move poor performing teachers where they can do the least amount of time. It's real simple. There are teachers who consistently um, uh, do poorly and in, in, uh, generate proficiency in this subject area. I believe you should create a warrant article for bonus achievement and, and quantify those constraints. I think you make AYP and NECAP a very big deal, and I believe um, Mrs. Leggett and her staff is going in that right direction at this time. I think you should compare course lesson plans with schools that are outperforming their peers, whether it's Canterbury or Gilmington or whatever, okay? Take a look at their lesson plan. See exactly how they're doing it. Don't just pick up the phone, make a phone call. Um, how'd you do so well? Go down there and talk to them. Can I see your lesson plan? Can I see what you're doing? Okay. Direct the staff, which is the principal and the assistant principal, to become teachers of teachers. They, they are, um, they've risen to this position because at one time, they were very good teachers themselves. Let's rely on them to teach, the, to, to physically go into the classroom, not just administer, but start teaching the teachers how to help our kids. A lot of that is happening. Excuse me. Hold on. Excuse me. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I'm going to have to cut you. This has been on for a while, Steve. Can <laughs> finish it up if you would. Okay. Give me about a minute. Uh, <laughs> okay, be frank with parents. Be frank with parents and stop putting a spin on mediocre performance. Have the best teachers team with the best students to mentor low proficiency achievers. Okay, uh, make curriculum director or the principal accountable, and also make the school board accountable. And lastly, validate that the teachers, administration, and staff are adhering to the ACS compact. Uh, folks, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, stretch this out from 30 seconds to a minute, and I'll ask everyone to stay within a minute if they can for their answers going forward. Um, I think everyone's had an opportunity to answer that question. Do we have any other questions from the floor? Hi, my name is Chris McStravick, and my question is for all the candidates. I'm wondering what your thoughts are on uniting Alton, Prospect Mountain, and Barnstead Elementary under one central office staff with one superintendent. Terry, I'm going to ask you first on this one. It's your turn. Due to the needs of the Alton Central School at this point right now, um, I mean, the board has, has feels the you know that we need more hours. For a superintendent, um, and we have really tried to figure out how to to consolidate. Um, the board chairs have met, and vice chairs have met with Barnstead and talked and talked and talked as to how we could do that uh, with one superintendent. We've kind of come to the conclusion that having one superintendent would probably not be enough. Whether it would be an assistant superintendent or more, more staff. Um, you're talking six meetings, two for Prospect, two for Alton, two for Barnstead a month. Then you're talking all the subcommittee meetings. We're in the process of this building proposal. If the building proposal doesn't pass this year, it may very well pass next year, if it doesn't pass this year. Um, that's a huge burden on a superintendent for time. Um, Jerry. Oh, yep. Sorry, I do have more to say, but I would love to talk to you at some point about Please. that. 
Steve. Okay, first of all, it's not up to me. It's up to the people of Alton, and it's up to the people of Bonstead. I think that should go to a vote, okay? It doesn't matter what I want. It matters what 8,000 other people want. That's <coughs> what the reforms want. That being said, the answer to whether or not you have one, one superintendent or three superintendents or whatever, right, is, is two problems. One's qualitative, one's quantitative. The quantitative one is real easy. You figure how much money you'd save with one, right? And you subtract what you're paying, and that's how much money, you know, that's how much money is left. It's not as much as you think. Bonstead would benefit much more because they would probably lose the SAU building, et cetera. And you'd still have to hire an assistant superintendent, and the assistant superintendent has to make more than a principal, and a principal makes a lot of money. Okay, so there would, be a, there would be a difference, but probably not as much as you think. Quali uh, qualitative wise, okay, Steve. yeah. Take a look at the cultures of both towns. Keith. I believe uh, it's very possible to run the three schools underneath one superintendent. Uh, I went to school at Londonderry, and we had five schools, over 4,000 kids. We had one superintendent with quite a few business administrators. Uh, the difference in cost is roughly around $20,000 to my understanding. Um, well, that's $20,000 more in our pocket to put towards computers. You know, we got to rotate our computers in the school. $20,000 goes a long way there. Um, it would be a lot easier under one superintendent to get the curriculums to blend together. So when these kids finally do join each other at Prospect Mountain, uh, they're all going to be on the same page. So, uh, yeah, I am for it if there's a way to do it. Thank you. Other questions? Raymond Howard, uh, this question is basically for Mr. Doobie. If you're elected, uh, would you be willing to spend the $800,000 that the all taxpayers have already raised to do some renovations to this school? And the other question I have for you is, uh, would you give up your contract with the school to avoid the, imp the implication of a, um, how, do you, how do you say that, uh, conflict of interest? Conflict of interest. Yeah. Uh, uh, to answer your first part of the question, if the renovation doesn't pass, which I am for, um, then absolutely. I mean, we have to do so many things to the school, it's unbelievable. I mean, one of the first things I would love to do to the school is put on the swipe cards like they have at the high school. I have, to, you know, to go into your, a little bit of your second part of your question, you know, I've been plowing the school for 13 years, long time. I have seen five head custodians come in, come in and go in that five years, and every snowstorm I'll come in, hey, you need this, you need that done, what, what do we need to do, you know, and everything else. I come in the building whenever I want. Now, everyone knows me, I've been around a long time, but to <coughs> say Joe Schmo can't come out of, you know, nowhere and just into the school. I mean, Columbine is unfortunately a household name. So yeah, I would love to get into that money to fix up whatever we got to do to make the school as safe as possible for the children. Now, your second part of your question? Well, according to the Town Deliberative Session, as long as I'm a subcontractor, not directly hired by the school, then I'm perfectly able to continue plowing. Am I willing to give up the plowing? No, because that's that's one of the reasons why I feed my family. Okay. I mean, I'm not going to give up my job. Or well, would you abstain from the vote when the, oh, absolutely. When the board approves oh, absolutely. the contract? I mean, that's that's a conflict of interest if I'm voting for myself. Okay, that's what I'm but saying. No, absolutely, I'll step down. Sure. Okay. But you wouldn't be willing to uh, avoid that conflict altogether? No, because that's my, you know, that's my job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Questions, comments from the audience? <coughs> Rebecca McKellar again. Um, I have a comment and a question. Uh, comment is that with smaller class sizes and a better work environment and better classroom environment within a school district, it is proven that test scores do go up. So I really think we need, we need to think about that. Um, also, what about, Mr. Doobie talks about this a little bit, but what about making parents accountable for the test scores that their children come home with? I mean, that 
parent participation is a huge piece in education, and I think right now within education throughout this country, we're really forgetting about that. We're holding the teachers accountable for too much, and parents not enough. So if you can start that question, you your turn. Your turn to answer that question. Sure. First of all, you can ask a parent to sign a compact, and most will. That's peer pressure, so most are going to sign the compact. Some may even read it. Okay? That being said, okay, outside of hiring a public relations firm, there's really not a lot you can do to get the parents involved. I mean, you could have small seminars and you could <coughs> teach the, the, um, for the uh, parents how to look over homework and things like that, but that's assuming the parents show up and that may or may not happen. <coughs> The bottom line is it's up to the teachers, it's up to the administration, it's up to the staff, and it's up to the school board to educate the kids. I real, I've always taken responsibility to make sure my kids are educated, but I can't make somebody else take that same responsibility that, you know, that I feel. You know, they're grown people by now. Either, either that's their values or it's not. I can't change it. But we can adjust values within the school. And we can make certain things very, very important. I think that's the way to do it. Thank you, Steve. Keith? I agree that we need to hold our parents accountable. I am accountable for my child. I don't ask anyone to teach my child more than I can teach him. I make sure my children read at night. I make sure their homework is done right. To make it easier for parents, the only thing that's on power school is science. I have to make sure my, my son brings his math book home every night so we can go over it with them to make sure he understands it. Half the time I don't understand it. But power school would make it a lot easier. And these is, that's some of the things that could make our parents more accountable. No, you can't lead a horse to water, but you can make it easier for them to help the children, to help the teachers. Thank you. Terry? I agree. Parents need to be held responsible and I, I think we try to at every turn we can. Good. Questions? Chris McStravick again. Uh, for all of the candidates, I think we can attribute a lot of the success that Alton Central has had recently to the work that Mrs. Leggett started as curriculum director and will continue as principal. So thank you, Mrs. Leggett. Uh, what are your thoughts on a curriculum director for Prospect Mountain High School to help support and build their curriculum, particularly uh, in the area of the math department where the scores have been low and did increase this year, but a curriculum director for that school? Keith, we'll start with you on that one. Um, you know, to be honest, I'm going to have trouble answering that one at this point. Can I defer and come back to it? Okay, sure. Terry? When, when our reading teacher, Mrs. B, uh, Dr. B, left, um, our superintendent recommended that we go with a curriculum director. And I, I kind of, I kicked and screamed. I was like, oh my gosh, we're, we're not going to have a reading teacher. We can't do that. And uh, she recommended that we do a curriculum and instruction director. Well, she finally convinced us that we would do it. And we still were on the fence. Well, she brought us Sydney. She interviewed, and we were like, how can we not do this? And Sydney came on, and it's been nothing but wonderful. Um, it's She has made the changes. I don't know if it's Sydney or if it's the position or what, but a little bit of both. And there have been wonderful changes, and it's it, it's the best thing that's happened in the last three years. So I agree. Um, I think the Prospect needs a curriculum director, absolutely, and a structure. It brings everything together. I get goosebumps sometimes uh, when I hear hear things like, you know, this class was doing the same thing that that class was doing, because it's that one person that sees brings everything together. Thank you, Absolutely. Terry. Steve? Um, first of all, we um, have to look to see if it, with the upcoming year, is it in the budget? It's not in the budget for next year. I'm going to guess a curriculum um, director makes sixty-five, seventy thousand dollars $70,000. That's a lot of money to find, you know, just, to, just to find. It's not like finding $5,000 for textbooks. That being said, there's still something that you can do. We're, um, 
in the process of hiring an assistant principal. Part of that job description can be curriculum director, focus on math. In other words, I understand how, um, how involved us, uh, and the, what the responsibilities are of an assistant principal. That being said, we can't wait another year to get the math scores <coughs> up or become a school in, in need of improvement at the high school. So the assistant principal that we do hire, right, I would try to hire somebody who, had, who was a math teacher at one time and can, and, uh, can uh, at least start making some inroads um, into those proficiency standards. Thank you, Steve. Questions? Hi, I'm Richard Brown, Alden Taxpayer. Mr. Miller, what are you talking about we're in the process of hiring an assistant principal? Is that public knowledge? I have heard nothing about that. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, good. All right, then one more question. Um, you said, I think that you said it's 118 out of 142 school districts. I'm hoping that we can um, find out where you get your sources. Schooldigger.com. Wait a minute. I'll give them the rest of it. Uh, they, rate every, they rate every single elementary school in the United States. They rate, they rate it by school district, and they also rate it by um, state. They rate it by city, and they rate it by school, and they, ra and they rate it, I think, by grade as well, grade level as well. And I was referring to the school district that includes an elementary school. Keith, do you have a comment on that? Uh, I was actually looking to finish the comment on the previous question. I'll let you do that. Yeah, go ahead. Um, after giving a little bit of thought, a curriculum director, to be honest, I didn't know that we wouldn't have something like that for every department in the school, someone to make sure everyone is learning what they're supposed to learn and when they're supposed to learn it. Um, I don't know if a assistant principal would work so well. He's got enough on his shoulders. But to put the job together so it wouldn't be a huge cost to the taxpayers, uh, probably hire a teacher maybe give that teacher a little bit extra pay uh, to run that department to make sure uh, everything is going smoothly. Thank you. Kerry, you want to address the 118 that Steve uh, talked about? 118 out of 142. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, more questions, comments from the audience? Barbara Howard, um, I was wondering if, um, how to, sorry, um, with the recent uh, automatic phone calling and the emails that go out to the school community but disregard the rest of the taxpayers, um, the only thing I can equate that to is to make a, a comparison <coughs> to is as if, if our Board of Selectmen decided to um, arbitrarily just notify Republicans or just notify Democrats that there was an upcoming vote. Is this and going to be a question? It is. Okay. It is. I'm just about there. All right. <laughs> and so um, I find that to be a discriminatory um, action on the part of the school uh, trying to stack the votes or um, by just notifying a portion of the population. Are you in agreement with that? And for those of you who would potentially be new to the school board, would you make any changes to that? Is that for any particular person or for all? For all. For all. Please. Carrie. So you find, you, you feel that parents of students here are a political party? When you notify them that there's a vote, in my opinion, when you're notifying only a portion of the population of an upcoming vote, to me a vote implies politic. It's political. So and so you, in the past, that's happened. So when we're providing a public service to let people know that there is a public meeting, that is a... But you're only, you're providing the information to a small portion of the taxpayers. And you feel no obligation to notify all the taxpayers. Well, we do, we do inform all taxpayers because we publish, we put it in the newspaper. I mean, that's not the only way we publicize it. The newspaper um, charges us 
the phone system doesn't, so it's a free advertisement where the newspaper charges us. If we were to copy it on paper and like put them at the senior center or whatever, that would cost us money. You would still have staff generating the message and putting Excuse the message me? out there. I said you would still have staff generating the messages and putting the messages out there, and the taxpayers, all the taxpayers pay for that. It's the still your only... The paper okay. costs money. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. So I disagree with it, but so you're in favor I, of it, I and you would continue with, with your, the policy. Your idea of what you're saying. Okay, so you, you disagree with me, and you would continue with the policy of okay, notifying the practice of, of what we're doing we we put many public statements over that uh, in, information on that mm -hmm. and the board doesn't the board doesn't re, um, see those I mean we don't we let the administration do that I mean what goes out we including, don't have any complaints from parents including last year when there was NEA um, and there was a national uh, movement about the right to work that went out as well. Information on that. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. the question. Steve, I do you want to address it? That. Steve? Yeah. I, I, I addressed it with you at the meeting. Please don't make statements. Are you sure of that? Yeah. I was at your <coughs> Did you hear that message? You all, they all had stickers on. No. And there was information stick, that had went out. Stickers are different than a phone. Okay. All right, let's. <laughs> let's don't make statements. The, the, initial, sure. the okay. initial question. Steve, do you want to address the initial question? <laughs> That's a half true. What'd you say? No. Yeah. But mm -hmm. That's a half true. Go ahead, Steve. Thank you. Okay. First of all, if there's a cost involved in notifying just a portion of the electorate, in this case, parents of children of students, if there's any cost involved, that's wrong. On the other hand, if there's no cost involved, which I believe there is no cost involved then the phone call should have went to every single taxpayer or every single Alton citizen. Real simple. If there's no, again, if there's no cost involved, if there is a cost involved, what was done was wrong. I don't know if it's legally wrong, and that's a campaign funding issue. I don't know. Okay, morally, intuitively, that sounds wrong. But if there's no cost involved, then it's just as easy to make that robo call to everybody in Alton. The system is Keith, uh, I have no problem if we were to change the system to include everyone in town. To my knowledge, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, your phone number gets put into the system, your name, your whatever, and at 5 in the morning when that phone rings, it's the school on the other end saying, hey, no school today. I don't know if some of the